All right, so lesson 36, tangent function. So in the past, I've had, uh, I've had kids um, fill this in. I still think it is good to, to fill this in as we go, but for time's sake here, what I'm gonna do is I think I'm actually just gonna use um, this trig tour gizmo and just kind of explain along the way, because it's really doing the same thing. And, and I find this a really helpful visual to, to go through it. So let's do a little bit of review first on cosine and sine graphs and, and the way they look. So right now it's set to, to a cos graph. And you can see that my little red dot there is right at the top. So what that means again is that cos is really my x value for this function. So that blue line when I'm at zero, when I have an angle of zero, is one right it's it's really the full length of that of that arm which is one on the unit circle okay so as we go around remember it goes up and up and up until right at the top we've got um the length of that x value is zero right so that's right where we right where we cross there right and then as we keep going around you know yeah uh we're at negative one and then zero and then one again right so that's that's the coast graph Sine is really similar, except right at the beginning, it starts at zero and then is full length at the top, right? Okay, so now let's change this to a tan graph. And we instantly see that tan looks different, right? Tan is kind of strange. It's got these weird like uh, squiggles going on for every one of them. So let's, let's go around again and just see what's happening here. But first off, let's remind ourselves what tan actually means, right? So tan, is um, your opposite over your adjacent, or it's your y over your x, or your sine over your cos, and same thing. Um, so if we look at, here I'll turn on my special angles here. So if I'm at 45 degrees right now. Let, let's see where our graph is. I think I find this is like an easy way to start. So our graph right now, so is 45, which would mean that my up and down, right? So my y value or my co or my sine value here would be at a length of root two over two. And so would my cos value or my x value. It's also root two over two, which this kind of makes sense, right? Like this length and this length are the same at 45 degrees. So then my tan is one, right? My tan is a value of one at that point. And then let's look down to our graph. And yes, that, that, that makes sense. It's at one, that's what that tick is right there. So we have a, a, a tan or a Y value at one at that point. So it's, it's your green arrow over your blue arrow. So as I come down here, you can see, okay, well that's at like 0 0.5 you know, or just a little bit over that, right? Well, technically it's at root three over three. And that's what you would get if you went, well, your y over your x or your sine over your cos. That would be 1 over 2 over root 3 over 2. And then simplifying all that down and, and uh, rationalizing the denominator, you end up getting root 3 over 3, right? So that's where that comes from. That's just your y over your, over your x, right? So let's keep going around now. I'm gonna turn my special angles off for a second and just kind of think about this. So at the, at the beginning, we're at zero. Well, again, that makes sense because right there, our green arrow, right? Our green arrow is zero. So that's really zero divided by one and zero divided by one is zero. So it crosses the X axis, axis right there, okay? But as we go around, this is kind of the key bit. What happens at the top? This thing gets weird at the top because We've got a value like our green arrow here, like our Y value is, is almost one, right? Like as it's coming to, to the edge here, I'm like very, very close to a length of one. But then look what's happening down here, our blue arrow. Our blue arrow is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's say it's like 0 0.0000001. Okay, well, one, like my green arrow divided by this very, very tiny number, is going to be very very big number that's why this thing just like skyrockets up right that this value is like coming right off the charts here it's approaching infinity as we get to the top right so that's this is actually an asymptote right here let's see if i can stop it right there nope nope there 
It's actually an asymptote right there because it's approaching infinity. But then as we come around the other side, see what's happening on this side now? So now we've got, we've got this, you know, our Y value that's almost one. And then you've got this tiny, tiny little blue value, but it's a tiny, tiny negative blue value now, right? So it's a tiny, tiny negative X value. So this number would be approaching infinity again, but it's actually approaching negative infinity because I've got a positive divided by a negative. So, that, so that's why this arrow over here is down, down here in the negative territory. Okay, so that's what's happening there. And that's also why it's an asymptote too. It's not that this number like divided by zero is like giving you infinity because is it positive infinity or is it negative infinity? It depends which way you come at it. Come at it from the left or come at it from the right. So it's just undefined at that point. Okay, as we go around, let's see if this makes sense. So now we're coming back toward our green arrow. So getting closer and closer to zero until finally it is zero. So right there it's zero divided by one, like our blue arrow is a length of one there. So zero divided by one is just zero. So that's why we cross the x-axis axis again. As we're coming around even more, what we've got going on now is you've got, well, let's do like right here, right? You've got root two over, or negative root two over two over negative root two over two. So that's positive one. So I'm up here again. Coming around and we got the same thing happening, right? Negative one divided by negative really, really small blue gives me positive infinity, right? It's going up and up and up or going closer to infinity. And then coming around, we got the same pattern. So this is the idea is that we get these asymptotes at root two over two. Here, I'll change the degrees or radians for a second. So we get that at root two over two. Root two over two, sorry. <laughs> and then down here at root, or sorry, not root two over two. We get that at pi over two, sorry. And then down at the bottom, we get it at three pi over two or 90 degrees and 270 degrees. That's where our asymptotes happen, okay? So that's the main idea, that's really it. So we just need to have a general idea of how tan graphs work for this. So let's go back to this. So determine the following um, from the graph. Okay, well, we've got our, x-intercepts are going to happen at zero degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees, right? That's everywhere that, that we're gonna be crossing the x-axis, right? So that's zero, or I'll go back to degrees here. We got zero, and then we've got again at 180, and then again at 360, right? Those are our x, and then the other way around too, right? We can go into the negative if we want, so negative 180 negative 360. <clears throat> okay, that would be the same thing in radians. So you got radians, but it's gonna be happening at pi and at two pi. Those are our x-axis, or x-intercepts, I should say. Okay. Our y-intercepts? Um, well, our y-intercept is gonna happen at the point zero comma zero, right? That just means, that's the origin. That, that just passes right through the the origin right here, right? That's where it crosses the Y. Okay, equation of the asymptotes. So that's gonna happen at, like I said before, that's gonna happen at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees. And really, so it's gonna be just following that pattern, right? Uh, the period of this one, so remember period means like, when does it start repeating the pattern? So let's look back to this. So the pattern starts repeating. So it goes up here. And then it, it actually starts repeating every 180 degrees, right? So if we started at zero, it starts at zero again. So your period of this would be 180 degrees, which is different than, uh, than a cos and a sine graph because that repeated every 360 degrees. Uh, your median. So remember median is the number that it's, it's um, it's around, right? So it's like symmetric across the line y is equal to zero or it's symmetric across the x-axis. Okay, so this would just be, the median here would just be around the, the line y is equal to zero. Our domain, okay, so our domain would be, so let's get fancy about this. So our domain is gonna be um, x, 
cannot equal 90 degrees, right? So what that just means that it can't be equal to like straight up and down because if it is, right, that's our asymptote, right? We can't, we're dividing by zero essentially there, right? So that, that was, so we can't have that. And then we also can't have this, right? So we can't have it there and we can't have it there. So here's how we're gonna write that. We're gonna say X is not allowed to equal 90 degrees plus 180 degrees N and then where N is a member of the integers. And I know that sounds confusing, but all that means is that if I started my journey at 90 degrees, right, right up and down, so degrees here, and then if I add 180 degrees, it's not allowed to be that either, right? So that's where that N comes in, because if N is an integer, that's a number like one, two, three, four, or zero, because if this was zero, this would be 90 plus zero, which would be 90, or negative one, because that'd be 90 minus 180, right? So this is accounting for every time we come around this. So this is like 90 plus 180. But if I did nine or 90 plus, let's say N was two, that would be 360, right? That would be like to here and then back there again, which accounts for that. So this is like a, this is called a general way of writing this out, right? We, we've done that in the past, so it shouldn't be brand new, but. Okay, so the range, your range is gonna be, that was a terrible bracket, is Y is a member of the real numbers, right? This could be really anything up and down, okay? Okay, so that, that's, that's pretty much it. Just you guys need to have a general idea. Here's one kind of long answer question. Um, so let's just go through this, get an idea of what's, what's happened on this one. So, and then that's it. Um, your guys' notes look different, uh, or it might look different. Um, I've actually kind of removed that question. I wasn't a big fan. I, I, I like this one a lot better. So um, sorry if you guys don't have this in your notes yet. If you do, then follow along. But All right, so it says a rotating light on top of a lighthouse sends out rays of light in opposite directions. Uh, the beacon rotates. Uh, the ray at an angle theta makes a spot of light that moves along the shore. The lighthouse is located 500 meters from the shoreline and makes one complete rotation every two minutes. All right, so what's happening here? Here's your lighthouse and it is spinning around, right? It's spinning around. And as it's spinning, it's making like a, a light ray here, but then it's moving across the shoreline as it's going, right? Okay, so then it says, determine the equation that expresses the distance D in meters as a function of time t in minutes okay so this question would actually be a little bit easier if it said as a function of the angle um, in degrees or radians right because here's what it wants it wants d so let's let's just write that out so it says d and then is equal to and that's what i want i want something to do with d right well actually let's back up a step let's make an equation using tan that expresses d in it so we can do this, we can say, okay, well, I know that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's D over 500. So if I want an equation for D, well, that's just gonna be, I'll move the 500 up. So that would just be 500 times tan theta. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much it. That, that, that is pretty much the idea. The only problem here is it says, it wants D as a function, so in, in like function notation to be like that, right? D of T is equal to, and then really, this shouldn't be theta, this should be time. Okay, so let's figure out what, what we can do here, right? So it's saying that it makes a complete rotation every two minutes. Okay, well, it says as a function of time in minutes. So I'd like to know how many rotations does it do every minute would actually be, would actually be useful. So if we drew this out, then if this, if this takes two minutes for it to go all the way around to make one full rotation, right? It would take two minutes to do two pi. Well, then how long would it take to do, um, sorry, after how many minutes, what angle would it be at? Well, it would only do one like so after one minute you'd only have gone pi radians okay so to, to to go 
two pi here, it's gonna be, so 500 times 10 of, and then that's gonna be two pi, okay? So two, you would go two of these pi's, right? In every, oh, sorry, two times time. Yeah, sorry, it's so like that. So hopefully that makes sense. So you're gonna go, so you're every one minute, right? You're gonna go around to pi. So if I'm gonna go around to two pi, that's gonna take two of them, okay. So anyway, so that's the idea on that one. So there's our equation. So now it says graph the function in part A. Okay, well, you know what, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that one too, but if we graph this in your calculator, you will end up getting one like above, right? And you're gonna end up getting that same picture like this, right? It's gonna be a, like a graph that looks like this one. And it says, what is the significance of the asymptotes in the graph at 90 degrees? Well, if you can imagine what's happening here, if you've got, you know, these light rays that are shining this way, and then eventually it's gonna be like, you know, shining down there. And then if you keep on going, eventually it's gonna be shining straight down here, right? So at that point, you know, you're, you're not going to be shining a light on the shore anymore at all, right? No matter how far down you go. So this is your, your asymptote, right? You never actually get there. And then you've got the same thing back at the top again, where this thing is straight up there, you're not gonna be shining on the shore either. So that's really it. Like the asymptotes are gonna be where the graph, so at 90 degrees, so at 90 degrees, you, you're gonna be, like you're not gonna be shining on the shore anymore at all, right? So, okay, so that's the idea on that one. So um, yeah, so hopefully that one made sense.